our friend has never been to Sweden. So what better way to show them the sights and sounds than from 3,800 feet in the air? ESSB or Broma was opened by the Swedish king, King Gustav V in 1936. It was the first airport in Europe to have paved runways. In this flight, we're going to find more historical objects that we planned our flight around. So let's grab our Navigraph charts and head into the aircraft to start planning. The city is built on small islands and a few interesting buildings that we'll fly by. Let's plan a route around the city of Stockholm and to be specific, around this restricted area. You can tell from the charts it's from the ground to about a thousand feet. So we're going to be aware of our altitude here. Once we depart, we'll need to take a heading over the bay about 113 degrees depending on wind. The first waypoint will be the peninsula located by Yelsfunda Lake. Our second waypoint, you're going to see two buildings on the left side, which are depicted with an obstacle symbol on our chart. The elevation is written out next to the obstacle. As we turn right to 89 degrees, the third waypoint is really easy to locate if you keep an eye on the tower in front of you. When you see the Vasa Museum to the right, it's time to turn to 156 degrees. Our fourth waypoint is located just after this little island, Beckholmen. We now fly in a heading of 260 degrees. Soon, we're going to see the old town to the right side of the aircraft. At our fifth waypoint, we're going to have to turn to about 275 degrees just after we cross a highway that leads to and from the city. The sixth waypoint, we'll turn to the DN building to about 301 degrees and then head back to the airport on a downwind leg. To increase our situational awareness on the ground and in the air, we're going to use the Moving Maps feature which displays our current simulator position in our Charts app. Now let's take off and look at this beautiful city around Stockholm. In front of us, you will now see the Yilsfunda Lake and the peninsula that we marked on our chart to the right. If you now take a look to your left, you're going to see Thor's Tower. That's right, it's named after Thor's Tower because it's located in Thor's Square. It was pretty cool because it's named after the Norse god Thor. On our 3 o'clock, we can now spot some famous landmarks in Stockholm. The City Hall, the Three Crowns, and the Central Station. As we now head towards the big tower in front of us, it was a formal medieval time village, but today it's just a tower. To the right, you're going to see the old town and the royal castle. On the right side of the aircraft, you can now see the Vassy Museum. Very interesting piece of history here. Inside this museum, you're going to find the Vasa ship. That is the world's best preserved 17th century ship. The ship sailed its maiden voyage in 1628 from the shipyard to Beckholmen after sailing roughly about 1300 meters to 1400 yards before it sank. Basically where we're at right now. 
a very interesting tidbit about this story. The king used a lot of timber to build this ship. He wanted a very big ship. The interesting thing was that the king's subordinates lacked the political courage to openly discuss the ship's problems being very top heavy, or they couldn't postpone or didn't want to postpone the maiden voyage. Now we're at the fifth waypoint. You're going to see a highway at your two o'clock where you'll also find the old town, which dates back to the 13th century. This district consists of medieval alleyways, cobblestone streets, and archaic architecture. It's also where the Navigraph headquarters are located. After we cross the Western Bridge, we can locate ourselves by looking at the DN building. This building sits in an elevation of 364 feet. Well, how do we know that? Let's just look at the chart here. We'll now head back to the airport and prepare for landing. As you can see, Stockholm is full of interesting landmarks that you can see within such a short flight. Now we're going to have to try to land this tin can in a wind that's about a six knot crosswind. Whatever you do, don't sneeze as it's considered moderate turbulence in this airplane. We encourage you to pick up our Navigraph charts and start exploring the wonders of the world. Okay, let's turn off the power of this aircraft and look for future flight adventures.